Hello strangers and scruff tards. welcome to the war zone, I'm Scruffy and this is Scruffy Tales. And I have to highlight this, I just found out about this today, uh, so I figured I need to make a video about the Swedish Bandwagen. Uh, and how a Swedish vehicle affects an entire front line, in other words, the little engine that could. And what we're going to be talking about is actually the Krinky Bridget and how Ukraine has managed to maintain it. And the rightmost right most map is the front line and then you have uh, the Kherson area and in the circle is where we have Krinky. And this is where Bandwagner or Bandwagns, uh, <laughs> if you want to pronounce it in English. Uh, have played a crucial role, uh, incredibly crucial role. And here we have a Ukraine control map. I'm borrowing uh, this. Uh, here we have Krinky and Kozachileri. And this is where we know that Ukraine has been operating for months. And as you can see, the Russians have allocated a lot of resources trying to counter the Ukrainian presence. And so Ukraine has a big problem here. They, there's a big river in the way, right? And uh, smaller rivers and canals and drones overhead, Russian drones always on the look, always hunting for uh, Ukrainian targets. But somehow the Ukrainian, Ukrainians have still managed to maintain this foothold, right? So much so that Russia has flattened the town of Krinky. There's nothing left. So the Ukrainians, they have now relocated further down towards Kosachi Lahiri that has not yet been destroyed. Uh, but the Ukrainians, they're not defeated. They're still, they are still there. And the uh, Russians are still struggling with dealing with these Ukrainian Marines. And today I found out how Ukraine has managed this. And it's from a Ukrainian site, Militarnyi. Uh, I will provide a link to this article down below. So click it and read all of it. It's very interesting. But I will provide uh, you with some uh, snippets here. And uh, so Ukraine has tried to ferry equipment across the Dnipro to uh, the troops in Krinky. And they successfully managed to do so with Swedish BVS uh, vehicles, Bandwagen. Uh, and as it says, halfway through, uh, the vehicle ran out of fuel and the driver then took out two fuel canisters and refueled it, standing on top of the vehicle and then uh, moved on. And it, this vehicle was effectively used by uh, the Ukrainians to transport wounded ammunition provisions that were lacking on the front lines. And uh, it's as they point out, they also tried to make uh, a similar move with a BMP-3, but uh, that failed because the BMP-3 has uh, water jets in order to be able to be amphibious. Meanwhile, the BV, the Bandwagen, relies on its own tracks to gain motion in uh, the water. So if it hits uh, shallow ground, it just keeps on trucking and drives across on the other side, back into the water, and uh, uh, it's afloat again. So, yes, incredible. Uh, this Swedish vehicle, BV Bandwagen, uh, was used to transport wounded ammunition and provisions that were super crucial for the troops holding Krinky. And the article continues to say that, in total, the Swedish armored personnel carrier <clears throat> managed to work 10 days under fire and the Viking armored personnel carrier only for four days uh, after which they were in the end destroyed by the enemy. Uh, but despite these losses, uh, they made many crossings both day and night supporting the logistics of this bridgehead. And Viking, that is just a different version of BV. Uh, it's a up armored Bandwagen doesn't carry as many troops as the standard version, but you know, on the other hand, it has more armor. Uh, but still, 
So we have two BV, two, two Bandwagen versions that provided important logistical supports to the bridge at, at Krinki uh, with uh, ammunition, food, supplies, and what have you, and also transported wounded out of the uh, combat zone. Just incredible. So now we know how the Marines at Krinki have survived for this long. Uh, they have, uh, in part, uh, relied on these Swedish vehicles, amphibious vehicles, to uh, provide them with all the equipment they need in order to uh, maintain that foothold. So what is this vehicle, BEV, or as we say in uh, Sweden, Bandwagen? Uh, it is a multi-role all-terrain vehicle in uh, every sense of the word all-terrain and multi-role for that matter. I mean, there's there's no place on earth where this thing can't uh, go. It, it can't traverse any type of terrain on the planet. Uh, and what makes it special is that it has two sections or two pods. Uh, it is tracked. Uh, so it has essentially four sets of tracks, two pairs. Uh, you, the main vehicle up front is where you have the engine and the driver, and it can also hold uh, uh, three or four passengers. Uh, and then you have the rear compartment, the secondary section, the uh, rearmost pod. And that can be whatever you need it to be. You can have transport, it can be used for logistics, it can be used for medevac, uh, an ambulance, uh, straight up ambulance. It can uh, have uh, uh, be used as a mortar carrier. Uh, you have a mortar in the rear section and you can also have command and control with advanced uh, communications, radars and all of that. You can uh, guide the combat, guide the troops from uh, these command and control vehicles. And you can even use it for anti-tank purposes. I mean, just put um, an anti-tank guided missile on it or an anti-tank gun like they did back in the day. So th this is a highly versatile multi-role vehicle. And like I said, all-terrain vehicle. These two images is of the BV-206, uh, the more common version. And uh, these exist in the thousands, I mean, tens of thousands. Uh, and <laughs> these two images are from a video. I will provide a link to that video down below to just highlight how effective these vehicles are. It's not stuck. It may look like it's stuck, but it's not. This, it just plows straight through this muddy hellhole without issue. I, I, I kid you not, this vehicle cannot be stopped by terrain. There's not a single terrain feature on the planet that will stop this thing. Maybe a volcano, <laughs> but that's about it. Incredible machines. Uh, and uh, as a transport, uh, the transport pod can hold 11 soldiers with all the equipment and stuff like that. And you can just pile uh, equipment, gear, backpacks, what have you, on top of these things. Uh, you can see it in the, one of the images here that it has kind of racks around the uh, second pod. I mean, just put whatever you want on top of it. Uh, you can also mount machine guns on the front section and stuff like that. I mean, absolutely amazing machines. I, I, I can't, <laughs> there's just no way to stop praising these vehicles. Uh, they're just incredible. They can't be stopped. Uh, except if you aim a massive, massive gun uh, at them. Uh, I mean, and if they're not armored, uh, I mean, an RPG run will go straight through. Uh, according to myth and legends, uh, RPG rounds will not detonate within the vehicle. They will just punch a hole and go straight through. That's a perk, uh, if depending on how you want to look at it, I guess. Uh, but no, the, the, these vehicles are just incredible incredible and uh what's even more incredible is that ukraine they are operating every basically every, every version of bandwagon there ever was uh they have 
the oldest version, the BV202 from 1957. They are using those as ambulances and stuff like that. And they have the more common BV206. Here you have it with the machine gun on top. Uh, that, you know, as a troop transport, I mean, Im just imagine how dangerous these vehicles are since they are so extremely capable of traversing any terrain. They can literally go where other vehicles will either get stuck or sink, right? And they will just plow through that terrain. And if you have infantry in the vehicle bringing javelins and N-laws, I mean, or drones for that matter, just super dangerous, super dangerous. Uh, I mean, you can just bring these dangerous infantry uh, with uh, these very capable uh, weapon systems anywhere. Uh, have them do their same thing, set up an ambush or scout out a position or whatever and just unleash hell, get back in the vehicle and skedaddle out of dodge. And no one can follow you around. Amazing. I mean, just incredible. And then you have uh, the next uh, level, uh, the latest versions here. BVS. Uh, S stands for Skyddad which is Swedish for protected. So they are armored uh, more so than the <laughs> more common version BV-206. And then the British, they wanted an even heavier version, more armor, uh, better guns, better protection and all of that. And that became the BVS-10 that the Brits called the Viking. Uh, there's a Beowulf as well, I think. That's another version. Not sure what the difference between the Beowulf and the Viking is, but those are the two latest versions, uh, at least. And uh, Ukraine is operating everything, all of them. And they are uh, can traverse terrain like you wouldn't believe. Uh, the BV-206 and the BVS and uh, Vikings and Beowulfs, they are amphibious as well, as we've uh, just found out in the article. <laughs> Uh, what's interesting, though, with the, the setup here with the, the two pods and four tracks is that uh, these vehicles are, uh, even if they lose one of the tracks, they are still very much capable of uh, uh, maneuvering and traversing terrain. So even if they lose a track, they can still push on. Uh, I mean, if that happens to another vehicle, tracked vehicle, if you lose one track, you're stuck, right? Because you only have two. Uh, and this setup was so effective that Sweden actually tried to make, <clears throat> sorry, um, combat vehicles and tanks based on this system, uh, where you had a big gun on the front section and the engine and everything else in the rear. And you would then use the four tracks to have a very highly mobile uh, all-terrain vehicle with a big gun and it worked it, the concept worked but it was just uh, it demanded too much of the uh, 1970s technology 1980s technology to make such tanks uh, operational basically uh, logistically it was a nightmare and if they eventually broke down uh, which you imagine they will in a combat zone, then it was a nightmare to repair them as well. But conceptually having four tracks on a tank in this setup worked. Uh, it just was the uh, issues surrounding it, maintaining it, the, uh, keeping it running, that was the issue. But uh, as a troop transport, light vehicle, I mean, it's a concept that works. They rely on these uh, for uh, search and rescue. Civilian versions are all over the world, uh, rescuing people out of blizzards and what have you. So uh, the Banvang series of vehicles, amazing vehicles, and they are doing, I mean, the work they are doing down in Ukraine is super crucial and uh, they should not be underestimated. Uh, in what they have provided Ukraine. And I mean, if you doubt the effectiveness of the Bandwein series of vehicles, here you have <clears throat> from uh, Barber from Wikipedia. Uh, uh, this image uh, highlighted in blue all the uh, 
operators of Banvang. Uh, and as you can see, they are used all over the place. I mean, they were designed for the marshes and winter conditions of northern Sweden primarily uh, to be able to cut through uh, waste deep snow and cut uh, be able to drive across marshes and bogs and swamps in the north in the subarctic but i mean as you can see they're being used down in the jungles of brazil and the jungles of indonesia and stuff like that as well as the uh, i mean as uh, the winters of alaska and canada and you have them down in the dry heat of israel and uh, greece and spain I mean, these vehicles, like I said, they can operate anywhere. They can traverse any terrain. There is nothing that can stop these vehicles. Just incredible machines. Incredible. I, I, I check that link, that video of these uh, of the BV or the Banvang as it plows through those muddy pits. It's just insane. And yeah, this is the Dnieper River. Uh, this is where we have Krinki. And as you can see, take a look along the entire river here, you have, you know, you have Russian units spread out to cover the, uh, the shoreline. But take a look at the concentration of troops up here. Just because Ukraine has 200 or 300 Marines uh, holding Krinki in occupied territory, right? All of these units here thousands of russians because there are 200 ukrainian marines in krinki or uh, in the vicinity of krinki and how are the ukrainian marines maintaining this foothold with the help of bandvang various versions of it so a couple of bandvang vehicles is more or less tying up all of these russian formations Thousands of troops, artillery, tanks, uh, BMPs, drones. I mean, thousands of troops, thousands of drones, hundreds of vehicles. Just because 200 Marines are in occupied territory, being supplied by a handful of Swedish Bandwang. Incredible. Uh, that's the end of the video. Check out the links, uh, go read that article, super uh, interesting. Uh, I will also provide a link uh, to an article where they uh, talk about the PBV 302, uh, the uh, Panzer Bandwang, armored tracked vehicle. Uh, yeah, I didn't explain what Bandwang means. Uh, Bandwang means tracked vehicle. So now you know. And uh, yeah, and also check the link for that video with the Bandwagon as it plows through mud. Just incredible. And I hope uh, you found it interesting and that I'll see you in the next one. As always, Gopomarsh, Ukraine, give them hell.